Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we are in Mark chapter 1, and we're going to be starting verse 41 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we saw last lesson, this leper takes courage, he hears about Jesus, he believes that Jesus can heal him. Uh, so he risks going into a populated area, as uh, the Gospel of Luke says in Luke chapter 5, that he was Jesus is in a city. So he risks going into this populated area to get to Jesus because he wants to be clean. And he says to Jesus, if you will, you can make me clean. He didn't have a problem with Jesus being able to clean him. He had a, he, his issue was, was Jesus willing to do it? Was he willing to do it? Because if you will it, I know you can clean me. And, and as we saw last lesson, that his appeal was to Jesus's heart, his, his, to his heart. He was trying to touch the heart of Christ to have him, have Jesus heal him. So now we start in this lesson, verse 41, and Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Now it says here that Jesus was moved with compassion. And the Greek word here means to be moved to one's inner being. It means to yearn with compassion. Now, there were a number of other times in the Bible when Jesus was moved with compassions, compassion towards other people's needs. And we see that in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. Matthew chapter 14, verse, 40, verse, verse 14. Matthew 15, verse 32. And Matthew 20, verse 34. These were all instances where Jesus was moved with compassion towards people's needs. Now, take a moment and think what it means to move the very heart of God towards you. Think of the humility of God that he would allow himself to be moved by a sinful human being's needs. When we come to God and we are aware of our utter helplessness without him and we cry out to God for something that we need, God's heart can be moved. You can move the heart of God towards your needs. When we pray and seek God, his heart can be moved towards your needs. And that's an amazing thing that you can, <laughs> that you can move the heart of God towards your needs. And when we cry out to him and, and, and we come to him in utter helplessness, his heart can be moved. So then it says here, he put forth his hand and touched him and saith, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. Now, the Gospel of Luke gives this same account in Luke chapter 5 and verses 12 to 16. And the Greek, the Greek sentence structure that Luke uses sheds light on how all this happened. It seems from both Luke and Mark's account that Jesus, it seems that Jesus touched the leper first, then spoke to him, and then he was cleansed. It seems to happen in that order. He touched, he spoke, and then the cleansing happened. But this, this isn't what happened. The Greek particle and the verb reveal that as Jesus was reaching out to touch the leper, he willed, he willed it to happen and he spoke the words and the cleansing 
and the cleansing all took place before Jesus touched him. So it would be like Jesus saying, it would be like you're standing here and Jesus is reaching out saying, saying, I will be thou clean. And then he touches him. I will be thou clean. He's cleansed. And then he touches him. Now, how do we know that, he, that, that the leper was cleansed before Jesus touched him? How do we know that? Well, because, <laughs> because the Levitical law forbade, forbade a Jew to touch a leper. You were, a, a, a Jewish person was not allowed to touch a leper. Otherwise, you would be unclean. So if Jesus had touched the leper before he cleansed him, then Jesus would have disobeyed the law and have and have become a sinner like us and then he wouldn't be our wouldn't be able, he wouldn't be qualified to be our kinsman redeemer so it had to be as as Luke says that that he was re as he was reaching out Jesus said it I will be thou clean he was cleansed and then he touched him all happened in one one <laughs> one motion <laughs> but the cleansing happened before Jesus touched him now, when Jesus touched the leper, it spoke of two things, two things. Number one, that if a rabbi, as Jesus was a rabbi, if a rabbi could touch him, then he must truly be clean. He can touch, he, this, this leper can now be touched and no one needs to be afraid of him anymore. So the fact that Jesus, as a rabbi, touched this leper means that that leper is cleansed. The touching of the leper means, is, is telling everyone around that this, this person is not a leper anymore. He's cleansed. The second point, the second point is this, that this was the first time in a long time that this leper was touched by anyone other than another leper. Think about that. This would be the first, we don't know how long this man was a leper, uh, months, years, but this, this marked the first time that anyone touched that leper who wasn't a leper himself. You know, before, before we were saved, we were only touched by people with the same sinful disease, disease that we, that, that we had. But then we cried out to Jesus and he spoke to us and he cleansed us with, he cleansed us with his blood. Then the Holy Spirit came to dwell within us. So as we cry out to, to the Lord, cleanse me from the, cleanse me and make me one of your children. And he speaks to us, I will be thou clean, right? Through my blood, be thou clean. And the Holy Spirit comes to dwell with us. The simple fact that the Holy Spirit dwells within us is like that touch that Jesus had. It tells the world that we, we belong to him. As the touching of the leper told, this, told the people around, he's clean. He's, he's clean now. He's not a leper. So also the coming of the Holy Spirit inside your heart is a testimony to the people. You're one of his kids. You're one of his children. You, you, you belong to him. The coming of the Holy Spirit, the touching that, listen, the touching of God through the Holy Spirit upon your life is, is, is a sign to the world that you belong to him, that you belong to him. You're one of his children. Now you're, you're, you have a home in heaven. Verse 42. And as soon as, as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed, right? <clears throat> it says the leprosy departed. Now this Greek word for departed is ape, apelthon, apelthon. And the first part is apo. And apo means from. 
and it means to go away from or to leave. So this Greek word means that it means that the leprosy completely left him. It was completely cleansed, almost like like when you read in the book of Numbers, when uh, uh, Miriam and uh, and her brother uh, Moses and uh, her I'm forgetting the name now Moses and Miriam and Aaron Aaron his brother. Aaron, uh, when Aaron and Miriam spoke against Moses because Moses married the Egyptian woman, remember? And <laughs> make a long story short, God smote uh, Miriam with leprosy, right? And she had to be put out of the the out of the congregation for seven days. God says, if a man spit in his daughter's face, wouldn't she be unclean for seven days? And uh, God says, I want her to be away, separated from the people for seven days. So she was, she was taken away from the people, the congregation of the people for seven days. After that, she came back and her leprosy was gone. I mean, she was cleansed, right? She had, it was almost like when, when Moses stuck his hand in the, uh, in his, in his hand, God says, stick your hand in the, in your shirt, right? And then bring it out. He brought it out and it full of leprosy, stuck it in again, brought it out, cleansed. Well, that's what this man was. The leprosy, it was gone. I mean, it was completely, it wasn't there anymore. So when it says when the leprosy departed, it means he was from head to toe. There was not a molecule of leprosy in him at all. Verse 43 says, and he straightly charged him and forthwith sent him away. Now, this is important. This part is important. Jesus straightly charged him. Now, Jesus wanted to make sure that the leper was officially pronounced clean by the priest. If people heard the leper's testimony before he was pronounced clean by the priest, then the people might deny that he had ever been a leper or that he was truly clean. All right, now I'm going to continue this because this is important. I'm going to continue this in the next lesson. We're going to finish verse, verses 42 to 45 of the next lesson. This is an important part concerning this cleansing of the leper, right? But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.